Welcome back, garden friends, to part two of the big seed unboxing of 2024. I have ordered all kinds of seeds from three different seed companies this year, Baker Creek, Pine Tree, and MI Gardener. In the first video, I talked about 18 different seed varieties that I've got. I've broken this up into two parts. So now in part two, we're gonna keep going and look at all of these fabulous seeds that I'll be trying out in some amount for my 2024 backyard home garden here in Northeast Ohio, Zone 6. If this is the first time you've joined me here at Bloom and Wilt Gardens, leave a comment down below letting me know where you're tuning in from. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right into continuing on with the seeds that we got for 2024. I picked out these really two unique varieties of cabbage. I will say last year was probably one of the first years that I've had actually good success growing cabbage and I'm pretty happy with the variety that I chose. But I also like to get really unique and unusual things. And both of these varieties of cabbage are just that. They are, they are like more of an oblong shaped cabbage. So they're going to grow more like this rather than a ball. And I thought, well, thinking about a compact garden, if you don't have a lot of space, uh, you always want to grow vertical if you can't really grow outwards due to space. And these cabbages in my head, I mean, they're, they're growing upwards more than forming a big round ball. So I'm thinking these might be good for a small garden or more compact gardens. Now I have to obviously try this out myself, but just in my thinking, that makes sense to me. So we've got the filter kraut cabbage. Uh, it says it's a mammoth sized cabbage with and its heads have an unusual pointed shape and an extra sweet and juicy flavor. This fall harvested long season variety easily produces heads over 10 pounds each and is a favorite for making outstanding traditional sauerkraut. So I really like to make sauerkraut and according to this is a really good variety for that. And then we have the Kalibos cabbage. Um, it is a European variety and it says it's conical, long, and heart-shaped. Two pound heads of deep red, good keeper, mild, sweet flavor. So it's on the pink side. I'm excited to try both of these. I'll probably do this red one, I think, uh, for the spring and then focus on this one maybe for the fall. A unique squash variety called Gelber Englescher Custard Squash. It is a unique variety from Gatlerspin, Germany. Clear lemon yellow patty pans with a bizarre twist. Fruit is oddly flattened, flavorful, and prolific. I really like the weird, unusual shape plants. So this is some kind of um, offshoot of a patty pan. Pippin's Golden Honey Peppers. So this is a multicolored sweet pepper. It is a beloved heirloom of the Philadelphia African American community of the early 1900s. It is delightfully ornamental pepper that changes color and finally ripens to a vibrant orange. Aren't these beautiful? So this is a sweet pepper, it's not hot. This is something I'll probably start my seeds for fairly soon because peppers sometimes can take a little bit longer to germinate. So getting those going probably at late February or early March in the Great Lakes regions is good. Purple cauliflower. I've done purple cauliflower in the past um, from started plants that I've purchased, but I haven't done it from Steed before. So this is the purple of Sicily cauliflower, another heirloom, and they get purple heads that weigh two to three pounds of fine sweet flavor, and it does say it cooks to a bright green. So while you harvest it and it's purple, when you cook it, it'll actually turn green. Do you think you could get your kids to eat vegetables if they're purple? So I had someone recommend to me to try growing winter melon and winter melon is a new concept for me because when I think of melons, I think of something that's very fruity and it kind of grows in the warm months. This is a melon variety. It's the giant bullet head wax melon. It's a type of winter melon. And from what I understand is that you do grow it through the warm months like winter squash, but then you can store it. It keeps for a longer amount of time through the winter than like a normal melon that kind of goes bad fairly quickly. So it says it's a popular wax melon variety in China named for the long dark fruit which resembles a bullet. Excellent storage quality and snow white flesh. So it'll be a learning experience for me on how this grows here in my climate. And you know, I don't guarantee that this will do well where I live, but I like to try things out and I think it's good to experiment. Mizuna pink. 
So mazuna is a type of green, like a leafy green, um, maybe similar to mustard greens or um, arugula. It's kind of got a, um, like a peppery sort of taste. Now this one is tolerant of heat and frost, but it's best planted in cooler spring or fall conditions. So it prefers cooler weather, but it is tolerant of the heat. Um, and it's a delicious and ornamental variety from Japan. Now that's the end of the seeds that I ordered from Baker Creek, but they also um, always send you some free seed packets based on the number of things that you purchase. So for my order, I did get two free seeds. Um, one of it is the Landis Winter Lettuce. And I have grown this one um, for several years. It's actually a very good variety of lettuce. It tastes good, but it is also extremely hardy and can really do very well in winter conditions, especially if it's over cover. And this one is new. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to spell it. Yedi, Yedi Kuhl, Yedi Kuhl maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's an ancient variety that has been grown by urban farmers near modern-day Istanbul, Turkey since the Byzantine times. This variety has been recognized by the Ark of Taste as a beloved culinary symbol of Istanbul's centuries-old urban gardens. So it is a romaine type with long leaves, a crisp center, and white seeds. Hmm. So this will be an interesting one to try. So I'm going to move on to the seeds that I ordered from Pine Tree. So Pine Tree Garden Seeds established in 1979. Um, and honestly, this year was the first time I've ever heard of this seed company because they sent me this wonderful catalog. So <laughs> uh, if more seed catalogs get sent to me from companies that I've never heard of, I may be likely to buy from them if there's some interesting things. But they have, um, I mean, it's a very nice selection. There's a lot of common things in here that you would find um, in most places, but they also do sell some of the more unique varieties like the dragon tongue bush beans, for example. Um, or their variety is called the dragon langere but it looks very similar. So they do have a good variety of different like heirlooms and things that are a little more unique, which I got a small collection from them, just trying some different things out that I hadn't seen before. So there is a variety of the Silver Queen corn. Last year I grew a variety of corn from M.I. Gardener and it was a white corn. It was the sweetest corn I've ever had. So that's why I'm gonna try the Silver Queen corn um, as it boasted to to basically say the same that it's just extremely sweet i've struggled a little bit with getting broccoli to grow and i i've done sprouting broccoli which i get nice little shoots of those broccolis but i haven't done well to have the type of broccoli to get a really nice big head um so i'm trying a hybrid variety this year to see if maybe that works better for me than some of the heirlooms that i've been doing and this variety is called gypsy it's a hybrid variety and um, it did say that it was known to produce, you know, good size heads that it was fairly easy to do. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh, another carrot variety called Red Sun. So this was a very, a deep dark red purplish color carrot that was very long. This one is spinach strawberry. So this is a spinach type plant that vines and it creates these little red flowers all around it that they resemble strawberries. So this is a heat tolerant plant. Um, it's not like traditional spinach, but it is a leafy green that you can eat and then you can also eat the red flowers. Uh, Swiss chard bright lights. This is something that I have grown before. Um, I don't know if it was specifically bright lights, but it was Swiss chard that has the really bright colored stems like bright red, bright yellow, and bright pink stems. So this is a mix. Um, these are fun to grow. That's how bright they are. Neon color food is way more fun than anything brown and crumbly looking. A jambalaya okra. Uh, okra doesn't really grow great where I live because it's not hot enough, but this variety um, did say that it can be suitable for northern climate. So I'm gonna try okra again this year. I've really not had great success with okra, but maybe the jambalaya will do it this year. Uh, marshmallow, which is an, an herb, a native plant. Um, originally marshmallow root is how like the marshmallow candy was made. Um, that's where it got its name. 
I don't think it's made the same way now, but um, at one time, that's how marshmallow is made. And this is a perennial. Uh, it likes to grow in kind of wetter, sort of swampy-like areas. So I'm thinking of starting this and having it grow um, maybe more in my wooded woods area to see if we can get some of our own marshmallow plants. And then the last thing I got from Pine Tree is Salsify. Now this is a new one to me as well, but um, as I mentioned, I think in the last video, talking about um, native perennial plants that produce food that are, you know, things that we don't necessarily think of. So Salsify is kind of more of a, a common native plant, but we're not really seeing it in our home gardens necessarily, but it's a perennial and it's a root vegetable and it belongs to the dandelion family. Um, and its root is what you are growing it for. You're growing it for the root and you harvest the root and you eat the root. And um, it says people compare it to a long parsnip-like vegetable. So I believe that the first year you let it grow fully and then you let it die back in the winter and then the next year it grows back again and that's when you would start to harvest the roots. And it's another one of those that, um, you know, sends down a really deep tap root and they start to spread out. So thinking of more perennial foods that we can grow and not have to think about planting um, year after year. So that is my little pine tree order. And I'll let you all know how these seeds do as far as how they germinate and how the plants grow um, since this is a new company that I'm trying. But I've really never had an issue with any seeds that I've ever purchased from any place. I've bought seeds from Dollar General, you know, like, and they've grown fine. So most seeds I think are okay. So now I'm gonna uh, go back to my Baker Creek order and run through the different flowers that I've got. Um, I do plan on starting most of these, if not all of them, in milk jugs for the winter sowing method. Um, I've, I've kind of struggled with growing plants from seed uh, indoors, but last year when I did winter sown flower seeds, um, I had a lot more success with them coming up. And so that's my plan for this year is to do most of these. Winter sown, so I gotta get working on these here soon. But uh, black pansy, beautiful. Um, oh, I got a free seed in here, <laughs> a basil. Cosmos, black magic. Is this the one that smells like chocolate? I believe this is the one that smells like chocolate. It's a Cosmos that smells like chocolate, so. Of course. <laughs> Time Magic Carpet. And this is a perennial, so I am thinking of where to put this thyme, like in an area that's like low growing, but I love the purple flowers. Rudbeckia. This is the caramel variety, a smoky mix of rustic colors from caramel to vintage rose. I think that this one, yeah, it says that it is a stunning display from midsummer to fall. So this is gonna be beautiful for the fall garden. Nasturtium Orchid Flame. Isn't that just a beautiful, stunning variety there? The color variegation is awesome. And nasturtiums are edible, so if you didn't know that, you can eat these. Straw Flowers. This is the King Size Orange Straw Flower. And these are gonna be really nice for any type of bouquets. This, I thought, was a very unique variety of petunia. And not um, the petals don't look like petunias that you would normally see. Um, it's called the Greetings from Jeromir Petunia, an outstanding mix of frilled double bicolored blooms in bubblegum pink and white. So I do zinnias all over my garden every year, and I don't really need to buy seeds because I save seeds for my zinnias. But I thought this was a really pretty color of zinnia to add to my garden and it's the queen lime red zinnia so i'm hoping to mix this in with all of my other zinnias and get that into my save seed rotation and then lastly um, i bought this to use for tea so this is going to go in our herb garden but this is a um, agastache i think it's pronounced raspberry daiquiri agastache or agastache someone please tell me how to pronounce this and it is a perennial in zones five through 10, heavily fragrance and stunning raspberry colored flowers, irresistible to pollinators, and a favorite in the Baker Creek trial 
gardens. It is also resistant to deer and rabbits and it blooms from early summer to midfall. So it's a long term bloomer and you can harvest this to make tea. So that is all that I've gotten from Pine Tree and Baker Creek. I'm gonna pause the video here and wait for my MI Gardener uh, order to arrive. I believe it's due to arrive today. It's in Cleveland, so it's nearby. And then we'll pick back up with MI Gardener. Okay, so I'm in my greenhouse now and it's actually like the end of the week. Um, so several days have passed since the last scene and it took uh, two extra days than I was planning for my MI Gardener order to arrive, but uh, we it made it here. It made it here, and so let's talk about the seeds that I got from MI Gardener. So I got this one called Moringa, and I heard about this on a YouTube video, and it's this really nutrient-packed green, and it typically grows in it typically grows in very warm locations. This is a perennial in zones 10 through 11, so it is a little bit away from home. <laughs> but what I'm thinking I'm going to do with this is actually start it in a pot that I can bring indoors over winter, and it basically grows into a tree. And the greens are jam-packed with all types of of nutrition so they've got vitamins A, C, E, calcium, potassium, protein so I've heard a lot about Moringa and I've been wanting to try it out so I was really excited to see that and my gardener had it. I got some more red onion seeds this variety is called Red Weathersfield and I'm glad I got some because the onions the red onion seeds that I started back at the end of January they didn't germinate so I'm glad I got more seeds um, because obviously the seeds I had previously were not good. This variety of aster it's called the aster rose so this will be a beautiful flower to add to the garden. Carnation La France. This is a double bloom carnation and I saw the photo of it online. It's really pretty and um, you can actually eat the petals. The petals are edible that you can put onto your salads or it even says bake into cookies so these are really nice. Black Swan Poppy. I need to get this outside ASAP because um, for some reason our winter has ended early and we're not getting as cold of temperatures as we typically would this time of year and poppies do need to be cold stratified so I either need to put this packet of seeds in the refrigerator or try and get it outside into some uh, winter sowing jugs hopefully so it can still get some cold nights um, so they germinate. Florence Fennel. I've been growing fennel for a few years, but the variety of fennel that I've been growing hasn't been the bulb kind like this. And this fennel, you more so harvest the uh, the bottom root bulb here. And where the other kind I have, which I don't remember the variety, but the other kind I have is you kind of harvest those um, ferns mostly. So I wanted to try a different type of fennel. Rosita eggplant. This one just kind of struck my eye. I really like the colors on this one. Borage, which is a beautiful herb. Uh, you can eat the flowers off of this one and they kind of have the cucumber sort of taste, but it's really nice to add in garnishes, but the flowers themselves are pollinators best friend. I mean pollinators love borage so even if you don't want to eat them they're still really nice to have in the garden just for the pollinators. I got more of the Mexican sour gherkins or cucamelons. Uh, these are really fun to grow. I needed to get more seeds but I've been trying to grow these for the last few years. Last summer was the first really successful year that I had with these and I made um, mini pickles out of these and they were so good. So I got a basic white variety of cauliflower. Um, I've already started seeds for a purple cauliflower but I'm gonna have to start these ones next. Early Wonder Tall Top Beet. This is a pretty common variety of beet and I've grown some of the more unique varieties of beets um, like the white ones or the golden ones but I found after doing this for so many years is that I really just like the traditional red beet the most. What? Uh oh. I guess I ordered two of them. I didn't mean to do that. Well, extra beets. And then I'm trying a new variety of basil. It's the blue spice basil. I thought this one looked pretty interesting. It says it has a strong spicy aroma with vanilla undertones. Um, so I like to do different kinds of herbs and I'm interested in trying this basil. Well, 13 more seed packets from MI Gardener. I have so many seeds. I have so many things that I want to grow. I feel a little bit behind this year. I'm not behind. You're not behind. 
I just like to get started extra early. Uh, I mean, I've got onion started, I've got celery started, and I this week started a round of brassicas. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm more so right on track, but I don't know, at the same time, I feel like I should have a lot more started by now. But that's okay, that's just me feeling um, like I need to do more than I actually need to do because right on time. And a lot of these things can all be started even later uh, as you do succession sowing, as you think about fall gardening, like you've not missed your window to buy seeds or start seeds. So we've got lots of time still to get things going. I just need a good weekend where I can dedicate uh, a full day to focusing on seed starting and then I'll feel a lot better. But that is not this weekend. Uh, it's my son's birthday this week and so he turned 11 and we're gonna go and have a little family trip to an indoor water park um, this weekend which will be fun and get to celebrate him and his birthday. And then uh, next week is my husband's birthday. So it's just the, the time of year for lots of birthdays um, in our family and uh, there's a lot going on so but I, I hope hopefully I can get one day here coming up soon that I can just hang out in my greenhouse the whole day start tons and tons and tons of seeds and then uh, I will feel a lot better so next coming up on like the round of seeds that you, you got to get started um, would be your tomatoes and peppers so I start those about March 21st is the date that always sticks in my head for starting um, peppers and tomatoes. So I've got a couple weeks still before those need to get in, um, but like lots of these herbs, like the basil and all of the different flowers, I need to uh, get those going before then. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me, looking at all of these wonderful seed varieties. If you missed part one, make sure to go back and watch part one of my seed haul to see all of the other great, interesting seeds that I got and will be growing in my home garden here in Northeast Ohio. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. By you subscribing and liking this video, it does help it go out to more people. Leaving comments helps tell YouTube that uh, people like this stuff and it's relevant and it shares it out to more people. So I'm really trying to reach the Northern Gardener, people in Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, anywhere around the Great Lakes region. Share this with a friend of yours so they can get all the great home garden garden tips that I'm sharing with you in these videos. Do something you love today, friends. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!